some film a story out of it. You ought to be so they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Seems a pleasure, Miss Jane, a heap to see you. Oh, good morning, Chief. Morning, Miss Hathaway. Oh, I'm expecting Mr. Clampett for a very important meeting. Will Jethro be with us? Probably. Uh, come in and bring your book. I've decided to get rid of Kavanaugh. Give his seat on the board of directors to Jed Clampett. We'll buy him new clothes, a new car, he'll join the club. We'll meet and mingle with important people. The first thing you know, Mr. Clampett will be hooked on the good life and won't want to go back to those hills. Especially if he has to draw the money out of his own bank. Huh. Brilliant idea, right? <laughs> Miss Hathaway, when I say right, question mark, you're supposed to say right, exclamation point. <laughs> Miss Hathaway. Yes, Chief. <laughs> what is that? A wig. I got it for Jethro. Do you think he'll like it? Of course not. It doesn't even look good on you. <laughs> Chief, always a joke. <laughs> look, a bank is no place for frivolity. That's why I'm getting rid of Kavanaugh, our Playboy board member. So take that silly thing off before Mr. Clampett. How are you? Howdy, uh, howdy, ma'am. Howdy, ma'am. Hello there. Hey, why, it's Miss Jane. Well, I'll be doggone. What happened? Your hair's turned white. You been sick, Miss Jane? <laughs> Look, Mr. Clavin and I have business. Why don't you and Jethro wait in your office, Blondie? Hello, Jethro. Sit down, Miss Clavin. Thank you. Jethro, I have found that the intellectual approach has a limited appeal, romantically speaking. So I have decided to become a glamour girl. What do you think of the idea? Well, I think it's swell. Thank you. But when are you going to start? <laughs> well, Mr. Clampett, how does that director's job sound? It ain't important to know banking, huh? Of course not. It's mostly a social position. And there'll be some great parties at the club. Several of our directors are widowers like yourself. Is that a fact? Oh, a little older, white hair, but... You know the old saying, snow on the roof doesn't mean the fire's out in the furnace. <laughs> how about it? Hi, dog, is Mr. Drysdale. Could be this is just a thing I've been hoping would come along. Wonderful. Sounds made to order for Granny. Well, then it's all set. <laughs> you know, she's been lonesome as a polecat in the parlor, and meeting and mingling with a couple of them white-haired widowers is just what she needs. Well, but that's not you what see, I... see, back home, she had herself some gentleman callers, and uh, she misses that. Yes. Well, I... Excuse me, Chief. Your wife is on the phone. She says it's very important. Oh, well, I'll be running along. No, no, wait, wait. Hello, Margaret. I'm very busy. Can I... <laughs> yes, dear, you tell me all about it. <laughs> well, Mr. Drysdale, Jeff and me got to be getting home. Uh, you want me to speak to Granny about being a director? No, no. That is, I mean, not, not yet. You see, we'll take it under consent. We'll, we'll figure out something. Well, you will hear from me. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> really? And what did your mother say then? <laughs> Excuse me, Chief. Mr. Kavanaugh, see you. <laughs> Clifton, to you, my dear. May I have this dance? Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, break it up. This is a bank, not a nightclub. And you get back to your desk and take that mop off your but, head. But, but, Chief, I want to find out if it's true blondes have more fun. Ask 
one. <laughs> Captain Moon, it's antics like this that have cost you... What do you think you're doing? Picking out a date for lunch. You want me to see if she's got a friend for you? Certainly not. <laughs> I'm a happily married man. Ah, uh, here she is. Where's the rest of the phone? <clears throat> <laughs> yes, dear, I'm listening. <laughs> I didn't say anything. But you were thinking it. <laughs> now, that's the second seat you've lost this bank today. What are you talking about? You have also lost your seat on the board of directors. You're through. Why? Why? For conduct unbecoming an officer, that's why. They're calling you the Playboy Banker. The Wolf of Wilshire Boulevard. <laughs> really? <laughs> Stop grinning. Take stock of yourself, man. There you are, almost 65 years old. What kind of a life do you lead? Out with a different woman every night. Party, champagne, dancing till dawn. Aren't you ashamed? At 65? Are you kidding? <laughs> Instead of running around with all those young girls, why don't you find some woman close to your own age and settle down? Find real happiness and contentment as I have. <laughs> yes, dear, I'm listening. <laughs> there are plenty of lonely... Granny. What? Listen, Clifton, what if I were to save your bank directorship for you? Well, that would make me very happy, no. but... All you have to do is to make a certain lady happy. She feels lonely and neglected. Now, she's not exactly young, and perhaps you wouldn't find her attractive. No! She's your wife. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of my wife. <laughs> Sit down. The woman I have in mind is J.D. Clampett's mother-in-law. I've never met her. Sweetest little woman in the world. Lovely, petite, lots of fun. <laughs> Granny, there's a city fella coming to call on you. What's he selling? He ain't selling nothing. He just heard about you from Mr. Drydale and he wanted to meet you. Now you run on upstairs and get yourself all prettied up. For a city fella? <laughs> Granny, this one's something special. He's a bank director. Now run on up and put on a nice dress, huh? He don't like the way I look. He can look someplace else. <laughs> All right, Granny, you know best. You better believe it. What does it look like I'm doing? Oh, it smells so good. Uh, uh, that's lavender furniture polish. <laughs> My, you sure are gussed up for housework. Well, I'm trying to set an example for the rest of this family. What if we was all of a sudden to have company? Huh? What kind of company? Any kind. Supposing a bank director was to drop by. A uh, what? Hey, Ellie, Uncle Jed says for us to get cleaned up. There's a bank director coming by. See, what did I take? <laughs> See who that is, will you, Jed? I'm busy. Well, that's probably your gentleman caller, Mr. Cavanaugh. Well, if it is, have him sit down. I'll get to him when I can. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Clifton Cavanaugh. I believe Mr. Clampett's expecting me. Uh, come in, come in. Uh, I'm Jed Clampett. So you're J.D. Clampett, eh? Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> well, it's a rare treat to shake hands with you like this. Oh? Well, it's the way I've always done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, you're quite a famous man with all those millions in the bank. Close to 50 now, isn't it? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Cavanaugh, I ain't never seen him to can him. But I got a nephew, Jethro, and he's right good at ciphering. One of these days, I'm going to send him down to the bank, pile up all my money, and... <laughs> oh, Clifton, I forgot. You come to see Granny. Oh, no, no, I'm here to see your mother-in-law. Yeah, that's Granny. Granny? General McCall here to see you. Another one? <laughs> <laughs> Granny, this here is Mr. Clifton Cavanaugh, and he has been wanting to meet you. Well, you ought to tell me he was coming. I'd have got fixed up a little. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry about that. Uh, well, I'm going to leave you two alone. It's a nice warm fire in the parlor. So, 
way. You've been wanting to meet me, have you? Yes. And now that I have... Au revoir. <laughs> Dare not trust myself alone with you, you enticing creature. Going somewhere, Cavanaugh? Uh, yes, as a, as a matter of fact, I... Uh, he you... don't trust himself alone with me. Neither do I. That's why I'm here. There's a nice fire in the parlor, Mr. Cavanaugh. Clifton, to you, my dear. Well, that sounds perfectly wonderful, but it's, um, it's getting late, you see, and I have to dress for dinner. Where are you taking Granny for dinner? Granny? Any place you say, Clifton. There's nothing I'd enjoy more than taking you to dinner. However, unfortunately, I already have a dinner date with my aunt. Dear, sweet, old Aunt Phyllis. She's been looking forward to it for a long time. Then there's no problem. You can take along Mr. Clavett for your aunt. That'll be just dandy. A nice foursome. Yes, it would be. Uh, my car, though, only holds two people. Then take mine. <laughs> Very nice of you, Milburn, but I promised Aunt Phyllis a ride in an open car. The dear old girl loves to look at the stars and the bright lights. Then we can take ours. It's as open as they come. <laughs> well, then, it's all settled. I'll go speak to Mr. Clavett. Oh, wait. Mr. Clavett might not like Aunt Phyllis. I've seen some of these dear, sweet old aunts you take out for dinner. <laughs> Mr. Clambert will adore Aunt Phyllis. How do we look, youngin? Ah, <laughs> uh, dog! You two are sure gonna cut a deep breath tonight. Is this staying out real late? I don't hardly think so, Ellie. Judging from Mr. Cavanaugh, his aunt must be well along in years. As far as that's concerned, he looks like he's waded as deep as water, too. <laughs> I don't know, Jim. He still might have a little snap left in his garters. Where are you going, Granny? I'm going to put a little vanilla extract behind my ears. If he still got it, I aim to get it. <laughs> well, Granny sure is happy, ain't you, Paul? For a fact, Ellie, ever since she met that fella, she's been grinning like a butcher's dog. <laughs> uh, I bet you that's your date. Well, Jethro, you get Granny. Oh, howdy. Come in. Come in. Thank you. Aunt Phyllis, this is uh, J.D. Clampett. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. My dog, you are the youngest looking aunt I ever did see. Not as young as that granny. <laughs> oh, uh, this here is my daughter, Ellie Mae. Howdy. Howdy. Yonder's granny. Howdy, Cliffy. Are you ready to kick up your heels? You bet I am. Where's your aunt? Right here, uh, Aunt Phyllis. Uh, this here's Granny. Your aunt. All right. Rather well preserved, isn't she? She sure is. Nice looking jar, too. <laughs> There's Jethro. I told him to fetch the truck around first. Truck? Good night, Ellie. Get to bed early, will you? I will, Pop. Have fun now. We Good night. We'll try. Are you serious about taking that old wreck nightclubbing? Yes, I am. And that's no way to talk about your own nephew. <laughs> and Phyllis? you honk that horn? In view of the fact that we have practically no brakes or lights, I think it advisable. <laughs> I reckon you must be enjoying this, Aunt Phyllis. Me? Your nephew told us how fond you are riding in the open. That's why we brung the truck. I don't know how I'm going to repay him for tonight. <laughs> oh, just forget about that. Treats on us fellas. Can't we go someplace and eat quickly? I'm all for that, Phyllis. I'm hungrier than a woodpecker with a sore beak. <laughs> Let's go someplace where there's music. Granny's fond of dancing. So is Jed. You got a treat coming to you, honey. When old Jed gets to stomping, he plumb knocks the hay out of the loft. <laughs> you fond of dancing, Aunt Phyllis? Why, Aunt Phyllis just loves to dance. <laughs> you got a stitch, Cliffy? I'll be all right. Can't we go someplace and eat? All right, honey. 
Aunt Phyllis. <laughs> Any preferences? How about a dark dry, then? <laughs> Leave it to me. I know every spot in town. Well, get to one in a hurry. Some people like to be in bed by 8 o'clock. Are you sure you want this table in the corner? Yes. Well, this early I can seat you next to the dance floor this if you prefer. This is the table we want. As you wish, madam. There ain't much business. Are you sure the food's good in here? <laughs> yes, madam, yes. I don't see no truck drivers. That's always a good sign when the truck drivers eat at a place. <laughs> really, I reckon it's a mite late for truck drivers to be eating. It's getting a bit late for me, too. Can we order, please? Cocktails before dinner. What do you say we have champagne? All right with me. I ain't choicey. <laughs> Phyllis? Anything. Fine with me. Reach your 59. Extra dry? <laughs> Extra dry. Thank you, sir. There's a dance floor. What do you say we work up a little appetite before supper? Well, there's, uh, there's no music yet. Oh, that don't need to stop us. I brought along Jed's harmonica. Please. Oh, you play the harmonica. <laughs> That's just dandy. You and Jed can take turns. And while you're dancing, I'll play the water glasses. <laughs> what do you do? Well, I have a feeling that tonight I'm going to do a lot of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Not the kind you're doing. I I believe this is supposed to be a bossa nova. Oh no, this is a brewery barn burner. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know it. Hey Jim, come on up here and show this shitty dude how to do the brewery barn burner. Just a minute, Granny. Feel like dancing yet? <laughs> and fellas, don't feel like dancing yet. <laughs> I reckon she's having Mike too much to drink. <laughs> yeah, that's it, all right. <laughs> Anything I can do to help you, Aunt Phyllis? I don't suppose you carry a revolver. <laughs> you all right, Phyllis? I may never be all right again. It beats me how anybody can get juiced on that soda pop. <laughs> Ain't got no wallop at all. I've tasted well water and had more. Hey, a little dancing might make you feel better, Aunt Phyllis. No, thank you. Anything you like? Yes. I'd like a few moments alone with my nephew. Well, come on, Granny. Let's show him how to do the Sibley side buster. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Now, Phyllis, I know what you're going to say, and you should be ashamed. For what? For using such language. I'm crazy about you. Crazy, period. How can that old goat be so important to your bank? Honey, that old goat has almost $50 million in our bank. He's our largest depositor. You see, they struck oil in his place back in those hills, and those millions just keep rolling in. So you see, Phyllis, he's really the backbone of... <laughs> May I cut in? You feeling better, Angie? Oh, I feel great. Go to it. You know a simply sound buster, do you? Oh, no, but I'll learn. And I'm going to show you a few things along the way. <laughs> Dog, if that ain't got the Sibley side buster back right off the floor. <laughs>
Where are we? Home. Three o'clock in the morning. Well, Mr. Clampett, we certainly painted the town. Where are Phyllis and Mr. Clampett? We left them off at the Watusi a go go. <laughs> I'd better get on over there. Oh, they someplace else by now. They was gonna dance their way right down the Sunset Strip. Uh, could I have a cup of coffee? Sure, come on in. <laughs> Maybe you'd rather have a glass of warm milk. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> Party pooper. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation. Pleasure, Miss Jane. A heap to see you. Oh, good morning, Chief. Morning, Miss Hathaway. Oh, I'm expecting Mr. Clampett for a very important meeting. Will Jethro be with us? Probably. Uh, come in and bring your book. I've decided to get rid of Kavanaugh. Give his seat on the board of directors to Jed Clampett. We'll buy him new clothes, a new car. He'll join the club. We'll meet and mingle with important people. The first thing you know, Mr. Clampett will be hooked on the good life and won't want to go back to those hills. Especially if he has to draw the money out of his own bank. Huh. Brilliant idea, right? <laughs> Miss Hathaway, when I say right, question mark, you're supposed to say right, exclamation point. <laughs> Miss Hathaway. Yes, Chief. <laughs> what is that? A wig. I got it for Jethro. Do you think he'll like it? Of course not. It doesn't even look good on you. <laughs> Chief, always a joke. <laughs> look, a bank is no place for frivolity. That's why I'm getting rid of Kavanaugh, our Playboy board member. So take that silly thing off before Mr. Clampett. How are you? Howdy, ma'am. Howdy, uh, howdy ma'am. Ma 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 <laughs> Hello there. Hey, why, it's Miss Jane. Well, I'll be doggone. What happened? Your hair's turned white. You been sick, Miss Jane? <laughs> Look, Mr. Clavin and I have business. Why don't you and Jethro wait in your office, Blondie? Oh, Jethro. Sit down, Mr. Clavin. Thank you. Jethro, I have found that the intellectual approach has a limited appeal, romantically speaking. So I have decided to become a glamour girl. What do you think of the idea? Well, I think it's swell. Oh, thank you. But well, when are you going to start? <laughs> well, Mr. Clavin. How does that director's job sound? It ain't important to know banking, huh? Of course not. It's mostly a social position. And there'll be some great parties at the club. Several of our directors are widowers like yourself. 
Is that a fact? Oh, a little older, white hair, but you know the old saying, snow on the roof doesn't mean the fire's out in the furnace. <laughs> How about it? Hi, dog, it's Mr. Drysdale. Could be this is just a thing I've been hoping would come along. Wonderful. Sounds made to order for Granny. Well, then it's all set. <laughs> you know, she's been lonesome as a polecat in the parlor, and meeting and mingling with a couple of them white-haired widowers is just what she needs. Well, but that's not you what see, I... see, back home, she had herself some gentleman callers, and uh, she misses that. Yes. Well, I... Excuse me, Chief. Your wife is on the phone. She says it's very important. Oh, well, I'll be running along. No, no, wait, wait. Hello, Margaret. I'm very busy. Can I... Yes, dear, you tell me all about it. <laughs> well, Mr. Drysdale, Jeffrey and me got to be getting home. Uh, you want me to speak to Granny about being a director? No, no. That is, I mean, not, not yet. You see, we'll take it under consent. We'll, we'll figure out something. Well, you will hear from me. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Really? And what did your mother say then? Excuse me, Chief. Mr. Kavanaugh, see you. Clifton, to you, my dear. May I have this dance? <laughs> all right, all right. Break it up. This is a bank, not a nightclub. And you get back to your desk and take that mop off but, your but, head. But, but, Chief, I want to find out if it's true blondes have more fun. Ask one. <laughs> Avenue, it's antics like this that have cost you... What do you think you're doing? Picking out a date for lunch. You want me to see if she's got a friend for you? Certainly not. I'm a happily married man. Ah, uh, here she is. Where's the rest of the phone? <clears throat> yes, dear, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say anything. But you were thinking it. <laughs> Now, that's the second seat you've lost this bank today. What are you talking about? You have also lost your seat on the board of directors. You're through. Why? Why? For conduct unbecoming an officer, that's why. They're calling you the playboy banker. The wolf of Wilshire Boulevard. <laughs> really? <laughs> Stop grinning. Take stock of yourself, man. There you are, almost 65 years old. What kind of a life do you lead? Out with a different woman every night. Party, champagne, dancing until dawn. Aren't you ashamed? 65? Are you kidding? <laughs> Instead of running around with all those young girls, why don't you find some woman close to your own age and settle down? Find real happiness and contentment as I have. <laughs> yes, dear, I'm listening. <laughs> there are plenty of lonely... Granny. What? Listen, Clifton. What if I were to save your bank directorship for you? Well, that would make me very happy, now, but... all you have to do is to make a certain lady happy. She feels lonely and neglected. Now, she's not exactly young, and perhaps you wouldn't find her attractive. No! She's your wife. <laughs> <laughs> By the way,